<laughs> yeah. So we're in the say more section. Uh, Kryn was just laughing at me because I was visibly, uh, I don't know, worked up. <laughs> I was like, I was drooling every second. Is that what was happening? I was just, my face. You were was, so oh. hidden. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I had two experiences. Two experiences happened simultaneously at, during that conversation. <laughs> One was the person that was in it, hook, line, sinker, just like, <laughs> and then the other person realizing that I was in that state, but then like, no. No, don't be in that state. Like, be cool. <laughs> but I couldn't be. And then I had to just shut up and not interrupt him because I was like, oh, my God. That was fast. That was really great story. I, I loved so many parts of that story. that he, And I'm so glad he took the time to share so, you know, calmly and just – it's like he was – he just lived it. It's like he just watched a movie of his own life and then reiterated it to us. So if you can't bring Sean to India, you bring India to Sean. <laughs> it's, no, he lives in a different, completely different universe. Like it, that's what's, what's beautiful is a very thing he ended with was like, I was living in one world until I was 35. And then I, I've been living in a different world for 30 years. It, and I like that he differentiated that inner world from the outer world. Cause it, you know, he said that in the beginning was, the surroundings, even though they changed, eventually I fell back into the loneliness. And that was what he, I think ultimately was, was learning. What was Amma, Amma was making him learn was you're fucking buying into the story, whatever story it is, you're still buying into the story. It can be a spiritual story. And you're, I know, I know that when he started with the Amma thing, I was laughing so hard because I was like, I know exactly what you went through because I <laughs> I just went through the same damn thing so to be to be uh totally honest what I'm referring to is recently we had a psilocybin trip uh a few weeks ago three four weeks ago and we, we being we being you and I mm -hmm. and <laughs> I don't Corinne literally just did it because she's like, all right, I guess everybody wants to have these mushroom trips. <laughs> Why not mushroom trip with them? And I'm sure there's much, much more to that story, but like we laughed for about five hours, almost straight. And it was just constant diving into the bullshit and the bullshit and just laughing about our, our own stupid tendencies, our own. I mean, you were our, <laughs> Come on, man. Let me have some of it. The only thing I was, the only thing Corinne was laughing at was her her mosquito repelling bracelets that she had on on every appendage of her body cuz she gets bit up. And I it turned in yes, you're right. It turned into essentially Corinne laughing at me for hours and just watching me spiral back into my story, spiral back into my story. Spiral. I mean, it was Shakespearean fashion towards the end of it where I'm sprawled out. Let me have my story. And she's like, I can't, I can't watch you on this hamster wheel anymore. And, um, I was just telling Meg about this last night and, I was Did like, you? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like Corinne's the, the most, the best way she put it was you are just so a lot sometimes for me. <laughs> I said, and it's like this for the people on YouTube. Like, All this is so much. So a lot. You're just so a lot. And I was like, really? I thought I'm pretty cool. And she's, and, and it was what, what he was describing, uh, was Werner was describing was she was baiting him into that, story and what she was seeing was his attachment to these identities of well now i'm i'm the best i'm the best student in the ashram I'm the best student. and i'm your favorite i'm your favorite and and being identified with that and being all puffed up about it right and then in the same moment for no reason she'd Just, say you're the worst and he'd be <laughs> but, and, and and so it took doing that and for months and months to him to finally yeah. realize it was all a head game and the game of the ego and the ego is, I love the definition of the ego because there's so many definitions of it is simply the ideas that we have about ourselves. 
So the yes. ego is the all just all the ideas, all the roles that you play that you have about yourself, all the roles that I play, the ideas that I have about myself. You know, I had a very strong identification to working with Deepak for many years. And that was sort of my calling card for na- yeah. many years. I know Deepak Chopra. I've sung at his house. Yeah. Um, he's a friend of mine. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it was all true. But I, I, it, my, identif- my identity was, work, was caught up in it for a while, for a short time. Yes. And, um, and, and, and yeah, and, and it's, it's very tricky that way. So, so what, what you were talking about is this, you know, psilocybin trip that we did a couple of weeks ago and you just kept we- weaving the web of yeah. your beliefs yeah. and, and, and like convincing yourself. And then, and we could just, both of us could see how these constructs you would you would convince yourself that something was true and how interesting it was and how perfect it was. And, it was, and I would just be like, Whoa, here he goes again. And then I just couldn't hold on. I would start giggling and I'd be. <laughs> yes. And then I'd be like, what? No, what I'm saying is profound. Why are you? Yeah, like, yeah, like, give me this. Yeah, and I'm like, exactly. You think it's profound and it's literally the same bullshit we just went over. And I mean, how many times did that relapse happen? Eight to 10? At eight least. Eight to 10. Yeah. yeah. At least it was like, and then it just became hysterical it was so funny. It was hysterical how easy, how easy it was to fall right back into right those back patterns. Into it. And it wasn't, and that was, I think the breaking point was it, it wasn't more interesting anymore than watching. So how do I put this? What was more interesting now was how hilarious it is to watch that process over and over and over again to the point where it's like, well, it's obvious. I mean, there was at the end of it, it was, there was no denying that it was the identities and the, the play of identities and how that, that worked in my consciousness. It was just so palpable. So obvious that it was just a story. It was all bullshit. It's just so much bullshit over and over and over and over again to the point where you're just like, Oh my God. And I think I finally said, I am so a lot, you know, I'm so a lot, man. And I don't want to be anymore. You know, it's, it's, it doesn't just, it's fun to now just have, you know, and that's what he, he kept on saying. It's, it's just all a play. It's just all a play, but man, what a trip to have Ama of all people playing these mental mind games, no, knowing the whole time, I'm sure she was fully present in the fact that I'm just giving you fodder to, you know, to, to, to keep this game going and just. She was doing her job as a guru, yeah. Yeah. as a teacher and guru. It means the pointer of the light. Yes. Teacher pointer of the light. It means yeah. teacher, but it also means pointer of the light and you don't get attached to the pointer. Right. You look at the light, look at the light. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. um, yeah. And, and I, what I was thinking while he was, cause I've heard this story several times, of course, over the years and I love it every time. Yeah. And, but I've only heard it one other time all in a row like that. Okay. Um, he did a private satsang for a, a group of mine, a yoga group of mine years ago, and we got to hear it from beginning to end. So I heard it one other time, wherever you go, that's where you are. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like, like he was in Switzerland and yep. he was, you know, his friends were like, they were his friends, but it, it was, there was something empty inside. And then he got to India and it was all shiny and new, but then it got to be eh, after a while he was wherever you go, that's where you are. And then he went to Ama and he found the guru and he was all excited. And then he had to go do the work in the cave and, yeah. and the cave was good for a while. And then it wasn't. And wherever you go, that's where you are, whether you're in a cave in India or you're, in Wisconsin or Nashville or right. wherever you are in the world, your life is your lesson. Your life is your journey. And <clears throat> the turning, that's why we, it's called turning points, not turning point. Right. Right. Because there are, you know, and the only way that I saw the turning points in my life and the only way we could see in Verner's is by him telling the story and you can see the different shifts yeah. along the way. You know, it's like, it's like, is it, you, you ever heard that analogy of that when they, you put the frog in the boiling water? Yes. At, and so you right either, away. yeah, yeah. So it, what right away? Well, if you put them in boiling water right away, it'll obviously die. But if you slowly let it boil, if you put it them gets in cold used water, to, so, yes. it's again, you get used to the heat, you get used to the heat, the heat, and then, you know, and so that's the way I, and so some people, 
their spiritual journey is being put in the boiling water and they, yeah. and people have a grace and they just wake up for whatever reason, or, you know, um, I feel like my journey has definitely been the slow, you know, slow. I mean, I had an amazing experience in my twenties, eh, early thirties with Deepak, where I was like, kind of woke, I was woke for about three weeks. Um, and I, and I was, <clears throat> I was at a seminar of his and something happened. I started crying and bursted out, out crying and, uh, my heart was vibrating. And when I, I was uncontrollably crying. And then when I finally stopped, um, everything like was di- everything looked different. So I've had things like that where, in, you know, that's like a, a bit, that was a big turning point. And then I felt like I was walking, I got up to walk and I felt like I was walking on air and everything looked different. And I understood the Bible for the first time in my life. I am that, thou art that, that is that I understood that. And, um, and then that kind of faded after a, a, about a month and a half or so. Um, so, so, so we have stuff like that. But for me now, looking back, this 30 year journey that mine's been or really 57 years, really since before I was born, it's been that slow, you know, mm-hmm. heating up, heating up. And it's been this integration until finally that experience that I had at that time at the Deepak seminar and had for a month and a half that's how I feel all the time now. It's just that I'm more integrated in that feeling now. So I'm not caught up in stories anymore. I feel connected to everything and everyone. And that's why you mentioned earlier, the psilocybin, I'm like, well, anything, anytime I've drawn, done drugs over the years, it's like, I do it just because everybody else is doing it. I'm like, not that I do it just because everybody else, but yeah, what's yeah. the big deal that everybody's right. doing it because I'm not drawn and I haven't done that many. I did ecstasy twice in my thirties And I did a half a hit of acid once in my thirties and then, you know, recently done just a psilocybin twice, but every time, even in my thirties and now I, I, it's no, it's like, it's like a fake high almost. It's like, a, um, it's like, I feel high in interconnectedness all the time. I, I feel when I, I look at somebody, I feel connected. I, I, I have this loving acceptance. Like I feel like every, I feel like the whole world is my family. Yeah. And, and I, I feel when I'm walking, like my body, I'm very expanded. Like sometimes I don't know why my body's moving just kind of like how you do when you're on drugs. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like that all the time without any drugs at all. So when I take, when I've done these, the psilocybin in particular, um, it's like, it, it's, I can feel what it's like, but I lose the groundedness that I always have. Yeah. And, and it's a little bit, inc- but I do get the giggles. I mean, you do get that. <laughs> Well, and that was something that you you expressed a uh, concern was you're like you you weren't you weren't afraid, but you were you were you voiced that I don't want to lose I don't want to lose what I already have by doing this, and 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 that was kind of the that was kind of what we went in. We set intentions, you know, set and setting is is almost as important, if not more important, than the actual substance. And, you know, we set our intentions, like, what are you aiming for in this? Or what do you ex- not expect? It wasn't an expectation, but it's like, what are you bringing into this um, as your intention to uh, perhaps learn from or take out of this? And, you know, it, when, by doing that, it really set the stage for us to be extremely honest about our stories. And I'm saying we as me, <laughs> because you didn't really you didn't really talk much. We, we, we found a lot of common ground in our experiences. I, I remember we, we learned, I, I think for the first time I, I learned how just kind of like naive, we, we, we coined the term Gilligan's We're we're just Gilligan's running around. That was something that's like, yeah, because most of the time I don't even understand why I'm even here doing this. So like everybody else seems to have so society figured out and I'm like, has anybody like realized like, what the fuck are we doing here? You know? And so it, that was actually really good for, to hear from, from Werner about, he's like, I just from a young age always felt like, what the fuck am I doing here? What is this? I don't, I don't feel like I belong here. Uh, and I've had very similar experiences and I know you felt very similar. We've talked about that before. I mean, I remember being 16 and, you know, I told my mom, like, I'm different. 
I'm not saying I'm amazing. I'm not a superhero different. I'm just, obviously, I recognize that I don't fit the mold here. I don't, I feel very strongly that I don't belong here. I feel very alien, very foreign to this. And I I think that was an interesting thing for him to, because I, of course I wanted to ask Werner. So like, so what did you, why do you think, why do you think that you felt like, what, where do you think you came from? Like, what's the story behind, you know, I wanted all that stuff, but then it became more important it, because it was like just hearing the commonality of it's like, fuck, sometimes you just don't know. And that, how we started was in confusion where I just felt like I didn't belong. And he ended in kind of the, that first meditation of confusion. Like, I don't fucking know. I don't know what, I don't know anything. I have this story about, I took these lessons. I took these classes. I'm, I'm this now I'm a yoga that blah, 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 blah. I have all these identities and I don't have the slightest clue on how to control all that stuff. And, and that innocence, uh, I think society looks at it, that it, it, innocence and perhaps ignorance as a, a negative, but in the, in the world of awakening, having that ignorant, innocent bliss about life, that mean that's kind of it, right? There's nothing more than just being totally enamored and interested and curious about all that's happening around you, no matter what's happening and not, not buying into whether it's good or bad or the story of that thing. So, yep. That's the key. That's the key. Being curious, being open, um, you know, back up on the judgments and, uh, and not living life in the head. You know, I've, I've had right. a couple of conversations with a friend of mine from high school. Um, my best friend from high school, actually, uh, she, you know, we've talked, we talk over the years, but she's called me a lot, quite a bit in the last couple of weeks. And, and, um, she, you know, all the stuff that had been weighing on her, you know, the COVID stuff and then the quarantine and working and, you know, people dying and in her family and stress and stuff. And she's definitely an empathetic person and takes people's stories on. It was getting too much for, for her. And I was like, Caroline, you've, you've got to um, be in the now. It's like you, you're, when you hang up, it's like Sachi is my favorite. Sachi is mashed potato story. You ever heard the mashed potato story? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> So you go, you, do you like mashed potatoes? Most people. Who doesn't like mashed potatoes? If okay. you don't like mashed potatoes. Then, then you can use, watching. you can use pizza or <laughs> a burrito or whatever it is your food is. Okay. So you go to Whole Foods and you, or you get a huge thing of mashed potatoes, like lots of butter and yeah. parsley and gravy, whatever you want. And you go and you go to your favorite teller, Sandy is there and you pay for your mashed potatoes. She says, Hey, Sean, how you doing? And, and you say, yeah, I just need to pay for my mashed potatoes. And she's like, okay, great. Have, have a good day. Enjoy your mashed potatoes. And you sit down and you eat all your mashed potatoes right there because you love them. And then you've forgotten milk, right? So you go back to the inside and you get milk and you go see Sandy again and, and you say, and pay for the milk. And you say, no, I, I need to pay for the mashed potatoes again too. And she's like a little confused because you've already eaten the mashed potatoes. And you don't have more mashed potatoes with you. And you, and you say, okay, I'll and, and, and she pay for, again for the same mashed potatoes. That's twice you pay for the mashed potatoes. And then the next day you go and you have a few things to get and you go through and Sandy's there again. She works every day at that time. And, and you say, yeah, I've got these groceries and I want to pay for the mashed potatoes again. And she's like, yeah, this guy's weird. So you pay for the mashed potatoes again and you do that again and again and again. And that's what happens when, say you, you have a conversation with um, like, for instance, my friend had a conversation with, say somebody at work, a coworker that was having a, a trauma that happened and was really upset about something. And, um, and it had to do with, with her at work. And then, so she hangs up. She, so she has the mashed potatoes. She has the conversation, the difficult conversation at the time. And then she goes and tells her husband about the conversation. And then she goes to tell one of her daughter and then she calls me and then she calls a friend and yeah. she keeps paying for those mashed potatoes. So the, the instance only happens one time. Yes. But you pe- keep paying for it over and over and over again. Yeah. It's like when you're in a car accident, you're only in the car accident once, but then you tell your friend about it and then tell another friend about it and then you have a dream about it. And and they these stories become more real the more we talk about it. That's how they get Velcro yes. on them. And so that's what's so interesting about the Werner story is that he had the mashed potatoes, you know, of the identification of the, being a good student with Ama, you know, oh, living in a cave. Yes. Yeah. And in silence and meditating. And that, and that's the thing is that the freedom is here. It's really fascinating that 
I love to hear the the um, the meditation teachers and the spiritual teachers that go into the prisons and the, the people that literally become enlightened in prison because the only prison is in your in your mind. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's that's what he you know he he said that the I wasn't oh, he said something about I, I wasn't attached to the suffering, or that the mind wasn't the the mind wasn't perpetuating the suffering is I think he mentioned at one point and it, it's like anymore 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 yeah yeah he said eventually it was like that's not to say life doesn't have it's not like everything goes well but but it's it just goes. It, it just goes. It's not, oh, well, that I didn't I didn't want that to happen. So, you know, now I'm upset that that happened. And that's when the suffering starts is when when you have that expectation of, well, how things should go. You're like, <laughs> and that's the ignorance is you don't know how they should go. I mean, you this year has been a, a, a clear um, a clear affirmation that you, you don't know how things are going to go. We didn't know that this was as possible. And some people are like, well, some people knew that it was possible that there could be a pandemic. Like, yes, yeah, some some people in a lab knew that, but society didn't know that. We didn't know as individuals. I had no idea that this was going to unfold. And then keep doubling down. We didn't know that uh, we were going to have this this uprising from one incident with George Floyd. We didn't we didn't know that was going to happen. And you know, it's it's interesting because there's like two things kind of happening there's this you know one side versus the other side um, and I know we've talked about this where it's like this is one instance that for the most part we all recognize that that one moment was not not acceptable nobody hardly disagrees about that and yet we still have these stories and we're more divided as ever even though we agree about a lot of this and it, then then it becomes you know we're attached to the story of this and we're attached to the identities of what you're allowed to talk about or how what you're experiencing we just get we just dive right back into the stories instead of honoring and, that moment you know and, and then let's just be kind to each other let's not get yes. in the stories and the, the right. you know yes there's a there's there are a lot of problems but i feel like focusing that's what i, I always tell people i want to focus on solutions and focus on yes. being kind in this moment yeah you know, but people want they want so hard to grab onto their justification of yeah of things like that's the thing that you found in that psilocybin trip, which you were really able to, to finally see in yeah. the finest. Cause you had cut, you know, you were, you were almost there with it. And then this just like took you over the edge of really seeing the web that we each spin. And so that's what I'm interested in now these days uh, of living my life is, is just, it, and, and it's also known as mindfulness yeah. um, is just being present in the moment present in the now and not up in the stories. And when you need your mind to think about something, it'll be there. Like if you need to have a conversation with somebody about something you're going to do next week, like it'll be there or yeah. whatever. But, but it, it, right now it's like most people are living in the, in the past or the future and, and not in the present moment. And that's why yeah. there's a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear. People are wanting things to be different than the way they are. And, 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 Yes, you can be uncomfortable, but just feel the discomfort instead right, of, right. you know, resisting. Because I think Werner talked about that. He just stopped resisting. Yes. He stopped resisting the, the discomfort. Yes. And my other teacher, Adi Ashanti, talks about that too. It's like resistance is futile. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's that's what's interesting is I think there is this story and this this. uh persona about awakening and in an enlightenment that there has to be a justification for that to happen it has to be a a moment like he's you know he said we have this story that it's this boom explosion and then and then it looks a certain way and it looks a certain way and there but it has to be justified and that was the thing we would get to this moment where it there was nothing more to say about awareness about enlightenment in, in we were Oh, oh, and we, you could just look at, we were just sitting across the living room from each other and I'm like, oh, that's it. And then I would, it was, it was always, 
So what it's what awareness is then is and then the story, you know, and it it was all about the justification and the story is the identity. And it's oh, now that I found this, now I get to do this with it's like, no, you're you're just playing back into the roles and the and 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 that's that's why it is such a progressive. I, I mean, it it would be hard for me to imagine somebody split second there, but I'm sure it happens. It's a progression of inviting that awareness into your everyday life. It's not a moment and then, oh, I'm enlightened forever. It's about a constant inviting that awareness and that, that, you know, oh, we're so awake. Like, I'm not saying that, but like, you have to aware that conscious practice into every aspect and then let it go. Well, I think that from my experience, it's been, it it can be that way where there's a a conscious aware trying. um, And and, and then there's a point where there's no trying anymore, where it just is. And it's grace where it just is. That's where he said, that's where his, he lived in one world and then he lived in another world. And then there's expansion. So that's not the end. That's really just the beginning. And then there's just constant expansion of that. Right. Yeah, I think what I'm speaking from is I'm still in I'm still in the two worlds colliding phase. It feels yeah. like where I, I'm certainly not fully integrated in that. Because and and just over the last few weeks, we've you know we've talked. I'm like, I woke up this morning, and all of a sudden, there's this whole novel of things, and 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 that I didn't even realize were inside my mind as, you know, and, and Meg, Meg calls me out. You know, she's a pain in the ass sometimes, but she always sees the angle I, that I can't see about myself that I've been reluctant to, to look at. And in, even as, you know, my parents were over yesterday and I just, I have certain things that keep resurfacing. And that's been one of the cool things about moving back to Wisconsin is you're face to face with those patterns again. And some of those are just really good memories. And some of those are still things that I'm suffering from. And so, yeah, when I'm, I, I, you're that, that integration is a great word. Cause sometimes at some point or at some phase or it's at, at enough, I don't know what to say t- time, but eventually that becomes so well integrated into your life. I imagine that it's not a process of of a practice it just is i'm not at i am not at that point yet and it's still these two worlds i I have been waking up in these two different worlds for a long period of time and i'm not fully present in that new world i suppose yet um but but then again i am so it's uh, how do you square that you know it's it's it just gets kind of squirrely but you are where you're at yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm where I'm at. You're where you're at. Our life's our journey. And um, it's such a gift to be able to be waking up at this time. Yeah. And becoming more aware and realizing it, that there's so much more to existence than what we're taught as children. Yes. There's a, there's a depth to life that's so beautiful that helps everything makes sense in a, in a world where if you look at just the world in the five senses, it, it, nothing really makes sense. There's so much pain and suffering and, and, and discord and um, intensity and roller coaster and not fairness and all these things you want to say about the world. If you look at just the physical plane, right? But that's not what we are. We, we are, so much more than that. And when you start to tap into that and know that, and that and the first way to do that is to realize that you're not your thoughts. And the best way I know how to do that is how I did is, is meditation. Yeah. Um, but some people come at it through mindfulness. Some people come at it like Werner did through Vedanta and Advaita. That's how he first came. And then he came at it through the guru is having right. the path of finding a guru. Um, and, and you came at it through, you know, church at first and yeah. And then, well, it, well, and that was, so that was the, the two, the two things that were happening when, when I started to feel like there was a commonality 
in his story and my story and some of the early, you know the way I immediately it was immediate that I was like oh I am very similar to this enlightened and aware guy right <laughs> you know that was it you know and I was like oh thank God I thank God I'm getting this affirmation of where I'm at and then it was and and then once that that's a pretty silly notion once that passed then it was it it was more about f- finding that gravity inside that puts you in the places that you need to be or in the spaces or or in the experiences that you know and and that was what was really cool i was like man every time he's like it just i just went there because it seemed like i should go there and we've talked recently about um you know one of my one of my programming is there has to be a reason you're doing something or there has to be a plan or a goal and what what that conversation gave me was i don't ever <laughs> have a goal or an expectation for some things i really prefer to live my life, not not just prefer, but it seems to work. I seem to be in the most flow when I just do the thing that's in front of me to do. Mm, that's the key, right there, Sean. Yes, and then and then I have the, I have all this. Well, but if I want to do what is right in front of me, I got to do all these other things first. I have to take care of this, you know. So that's the two worlds that I lived in. But it, this affirmation was you you know when it's right in front of you and to do it you just choose to do it or not or you choose to let the story dictate what you Or you choose the convoluted convoluted way to do right. it so you do what's in front right. of you to do but then you're multitasking in your head and you're regretting the past and yeah. avoiding the future and doing all the things you do normally do instead of really fully being in the task that's in front of you to do yes yeah, and even last night, you know, Meg, she gave me a hard time because I, I, I told her, uh, you know, more about the podcast. We, we have three kids. We don't often get the conversation. You know, she knew I was doing it, but it was just kind of like, oh, cool, okay, fine, you know. And we had time to actually talk about it. And she goes, well, not, not to be your dad about it, but what is the goal of the podcast? <laughs> and That's she so knew, your dad. And she knew, she knew that, that, what she was asking w- was probably the wrong question but she asked it anyways and i was like man honestly it it's just we decided to do it because it just seemed like we should it it, and that's kind of you know hopefully as we're doing this and kind of getting through the first you know couple episodes of it it's like this is this is not there's no you know, initiative here, except to just have these conversations that we've had now for a very long time out in the open, because, you know, and, and point in case with Werner, hearing his story makes me feel like I have hope in my own, in my own world. I, 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 hearing what he went through and how you can meditate in a cave for X amount of whatever, and you're going to deal with the same thing that anybody else in any other situation is going to deal with. And I think that we should, we should use that as a, as a commonality. And then, and that's where compassion grows and empathy grows. It's like, Hey, I know what I've gone through and I know how hard it has been to go through that, that self inquiry. I only want to create a space that is, that helps you with your self inquiry. Now that's not always going to be comfortable, but, but I, I will ultimately love and have compassion for you as you go through it instead of, you know, what we see in the world a lot of times. So, I mean, that, that's what I'm, if, if there is a goal or a hope, it's, it's to maybe give people the, the sense that, Hey, you're onto something here. Keep going. Yes. Beautiful. That's my hope too. Yeah. I mean, first, first of all, we just love talking about this stuff. Yes. And secondly, you know, it, it might be able to help other people that are, yeah. 
You're, just, you're not crazy. You're not crazy. You're not alone. And but but if you keep going crazy and going into that loneliness of the wilderness of yourself, you're going to find something that is yeah. way beyond the, the the struggle and the suffering. And it's really you, you have you have been somebody that has held my hand as a friend, as a teacher in different areas. You've pushed me in ways you have done a lot of those same mechanisms of like, you know, and you've watched me really stumble for a, a long period of time through my story. And and it's having that experience of like, fuck, isn't it just really fun to laugh at ourselves now? You know, that is, that is a treasured moment now. And, and really it's, I would, I would, I think it's enjoyable to watch people discover the play of their own life. Cause it's pretty fucking entertaining <laughs> you know it's really fun so it is focus on your own life your your own life needs you yes not you know there we're fascinated with story we're fascinated with movies and television and and wanting to be something other than we're not wanting you know our yeah. goals and our, but it's your life is right in front of you yeah. right there and and it's and it's beautiful and you are the hero you're the star of your own journey and the more you focus on that you know uh, the more you'll start to be in the flow yeah. and, and, you know, all these turning points will be very evident and, and it'll, it starts to feel good. You, you know, that feel like, like Werner never questioned. He just went, yeah. you know, and, you know, and if you follow your, your gut and your feeling of where you think you need to go, not what other people did, not trying to copy other people's journey, but, but, you know, listening and being inspired, you know, like what we're trying to do, you can listen and be inspired, but finding that truth within yourself and what works for you. And that's different for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that's why I, I, I endeavor to have a community where people get to ha- bring that experience in and then go back out to their world, bring that experience in. And that's ultimately, that's what, that's what this is really. I mean, it's obviously Werner doesn't need this podcast, but, but. But we, we, I don't know if we need it, but it's in front of us and we're doing that. And, you know, but what a fucking great first interview. I mean, I, I, I was, sometimes <laughs> I'd see you like, almost like you wanted to pinch yourself. Is that how you felt? You were like, what is happening now? I was tripping balls. I was tripping mine. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, it was, it was, it was just so enjoyable that that's really all. It, I mean. Yes, there was all kinds of thoughts and questions. Oh, I had a million of them as you called me out on that. But it was just enjoyable to shut up and listen to to what what really is a pretty simple story, but it's incredibly profound at the same time, you know. And that's that's the duality. You know, it's it's really simple. It's basic, but you know, you're talking about a 30, 40 year story and. I just love it. I just love to hear that. I love to hear people's stories. It's just really, so I was enthralled and captivated the whole time. And, you know, I think I did a really good job not talking. You did. Really I was hard. so proud of you. I was so was proud so of you. Hard. It was so hard. Cause I was a little, cause sometimes, you know, Werner pauses quite a yep. bit in between. Yep. And I was like, Sean, don't jump in, but you t- totally, you, I could tell you never were going to like, you were totally soaking it in and, and you, you got it. Like, yeah. You, well, you got it. he was, I wanted to a lot, <laughs> I, but I didn't. So, I mean, you know, thank you so much for setting that up and getting it all, you know, programmed and ready to go. Uh, that was incredibly enjoyable. And, you know, I just, can't, I, I can't wait. I know we're, I, I know who is coming up and I can't wait. I know they're all going to be very different stories. I'm sure there's going to be some common themes, but man, uh, I'm already just super floored and excited to, to have, you know, that's number two. And I'm number two and I'm blown away. Uh, so now there's nothing more to say. (laughs) (laughs) So thanks. See you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye.